Hey guys, this is Billy from adultcello.com and today this video is in response to a number of emails and messages I've gotten from adult learners who are struggling with extensions, conceptualizing it all the way down to doing it but feeling a lot of pain. So I have five guidelines today for extensions in the left hand and that will help you understand how to go about getting comfortable with them. I must admit, for me, they were not the most comfortable thing at the beginning. Um, I could do them, but I was incredibly tight. So the more the, the more quickly you address tension and eliminate it as much as possible from these extensions, the more comfort you'll have and the, the less hard work of undoing bad habits you'll have in the future. So let's get started. First, I'm just gonna define what an extension is. Okay, so if you're in a normal closed position, any hand position on the cello in the lower neck, your each finger is gonna be a half step higher or lower than the next finger, okay? So let's say if I'm on uh, the D string here in first position, I have my first finger on E, my second finger in closed position is an F, my third finger would be an F sharp or a G flat, and my fourth finger would be a G natural, okay? So during an extension, you're gonna put a whole step instead of a half step between your first and second finger, okay? The reason you would wanna do this is that you can then from the same hand position reach all the way down to an E flat instead of just an E natural or if you extend forwards and open your hand and fall forwards on the neck you now with your fourth finger you could play a G sharp instead of a G natural so it basically it slightly expands the range of notes you can play depending on the key signature of the piece you're in that happens a lot because just the way certain scales and key signatures sit on the cello's fingerboard, it's an incredibly essential and useful left-hand technique. But because of this extra stretch, it's also very uncomfortable for a lot of people, including me when I started doing it. So guideline number one is that actually the spacing is, the, the whole step is always between one and two. Whether you reach back or you extend forwards, the stretch in the extension is going to be between your first finger and your second finger. Two, three, and four in a typical extension are not, they don't change at all. What I did, uh, which was part of the reason for all my tension, was I thought extension and then I just sort of like, I, like my body, I was just like doing like a starfish with my hand and just reaching in every direction like, extend, go, you know, and it was just, every finger was kind of stretching out. And that's actually not what's needed, is you need twice the space, so a half step to a whole step, between one and two, but then two, three, and four are the same. So beware of just sort of this top row of knuckles and your palm and just sort of feeling like you're trying to shoot your hand out. It's, it's not that sensation. It's figuring out a way to hinge open and make a comfortable distance of a whole step only between one and two. Guideline number two is that you can play on the side of your finger. In certain extensions, I'm gonna reach back, for example, and my finger will be pointed kind of towards my face. I'm actually gonna play, be, I'd be playing the note with a different part of my first finger. That's okay, okay? <laughs> That's totally fine to do that, and you can actually think of that little adjustment as a way to get more comfortable. What happens with a lot of people including me, this is going to be including me for all of these because I made all these mistakes for a long time, is you kind of reach back and then as you're going to play, your first finger starts to kind of curl forward like this and it's because you want to get to that, you know, that typical plain contact point, okay? And so you end up like, you reach back and then it just sort of like curls on you. There's two problems with that. First off is it can create extra tension to because now you're kind of like fighting, you're shooting your hand, your finger back and it's curling forward. And secondly, you're going sharp because your contact has moved forward. So the pitch just went up when you didn't want it to. Okay, so be okay with the idea of playing on the side of your finger. Where this won't be the case is if you do an extension and then you're gonna vibrate, something like that, you're gonna sit on that note for a while. It's very hard to get a good vibrato on the side of your finger in an extension. So for fast playing especially, Go ahead, play the side of the finger. Guideline number three is thumb goes behind two or off the neck. This, once again, was a thing I just loved to do, and by, uh, that's sarcastic, it was a very bad thing I was doing, is I had 
my thumb was generally kind of behind my first finger a little too much to begin with, and then when I did extensions, it continued to be behind my first finger. I had this kind of a feeling, maybe this is slightly exaggerated, but only slightly. And so when I would play fourth finger and extension, it, it, it was this horrible feeling of like pushing with the thumb into the back of the neck, and then at the same time like pushing down like a, like a weird vice with my fourth finger. So what you're gonna want is to find a balanced hand, okay? That's like the name of the game for so much of left hand technique in cello playing. And for me, and for pretty much everyone, a balanced hand is gonna mean that your thumb is, is under your second finger, especially in extensions, okay? So instead of thinking like, here's my first finger, now let me play other notes, you're gonna think about your second finger is kind of your ground zero, your, your balance point, and then if you reach back, you reach back. If you fall forward to play your fourth finger, you fall forward. So it's, it's kind of like rotating around that second finger. That's your balance point. That will dramatically decrease the amount of tension you're feeling when you're playing in the extensions. If you just can't seem to get it under the second finger and it wants to stay behind first finger, I would even suggest letting your thumb dangle off the back of the neck in extensions for a little while. And when I say dangle, I don't mean stiff thumb like in a, a hitchhiker position like flexed out you want to have it dangling as loose as possible and you're just getting used to you know kind of moving around with a thumb that's uninvolved okay eventually ideally it's going to you know reconnect with the neck but closer to the second finger all right guideline number four is get springy okay and what i'm talking about specifically is this first row of knuckles let's say i'm going to reach back I want to have, for an extension, I want to have a feeling that this row of knuckles, it, it does, I'm not saying that they're necessarily going to move around a whole bunch, but they're, they're flexible and relaxed enough that I, you could do something like this, where, you know, this, this hinge, this knuckle, this row of knuckles right here is collapsing, you know, very easily towards the fingerboard. A big thing I see with a lot of adult learners, uh, including me whenever I look at old videos of myself, is a hand where because you're an extension, it feels kind of like this with your arms, like these were my fingers, and then the, the top of your hand is just way far away from the fingerboard. So that's telling me that the, the extension is being felt, but it's basically from a lot of like stiff, rigid, you know, everything's held here and it's just kind of way out here. So what I would encourage is thinking about dropping weight into the string with the fingers and allowing that to be more flexible, okay? So you, it's not about getting stiff and then kind of pushing down and squeezing. It's, it's kind of the opposite is, okay, I'm in, let's say I'm in first position, boom. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna let my, finger really flex forward and then I get my new balance point okay you can kind of practice an exercise like this where I'm just shooting my finger back and then also working on seeing if I can get a real springy action in that row of knuckles and finally guideline number five is reach back hinge forward if you reach back or you you know fall forward to do an extension, even in the same hand position, it doesn't mean you're, you're gonna feel like the same, you're doing the same thing, okay? So if I'm reaching back with the first finger to create an extension, that's literally what I feel like I do. I feel like my, maybe my elbow comes forward just a little bit, we got that springiness, and then I basically am pointing like this guy right here. I just kind of straighten my finger out and point it back at an angle and I've got my extension, okay? If I'm extending forward, so let's say I'm still in first position, E on the D string with the first finger, and I'm gonna to go to that G sharp, that's more where I'm gonna hinge. I wanna feel, as I open, as I kind of fall forward with my hand, I wanna feel like a hinge opening. And that's the hinge between the first and the second finger. So there'll be a degree of kind of rotation, sort of this direction rotation, and then falling for it at the same time. So it's just, I don't know, sometimes in my head, I just think of one of those futons. I guess, yeah, I used to, I had a best friend in middle school. I'd sleep over at his house all the time before school. 
And we, I slept on a futon, so I'd always like pull that thing out, and it was like an accordion the way it opened. <laughs> it just stuck with me. That's kind of what I imagine with my finger is it's, it's kind of a closed up futon, boom, and then it just, it's sort of like when you pull the futon out, it just sort of opens. It's that feeling. So it's not about forcing your fingers apart, but you just have this position and you have this open position and then you just fall forward. You just hinge forward and, and find it. Okay, so it's more of a, a passive opening system than the starfish method I met, uh, mentioned earlier. So, all right, those are my five guidelines for extensions. Um, just the biggest thing with that, I think, is to try your best to be patient and to be mindful when you're practicing extensions. And as much as you want to just get through the piece and, and move on, really ask yourself those questions like how much tension do I do I have right now let me maybe I'll even turn my camera around videotape myself doing an extension does my hand look super far away from the fingerboard do, can, is it clear that I'm way too tense and then just sort of problem solve from there so all right I hope that helps uh, if you have any questions you can leave them in the comments below and if you haven't subscribed already I'd really appreciate it thanks so much see you next week